Hello, I'm Sandro with Galfer Braking Systems. And I'm Robert. Today we're going to be showing you how to install a front ATV brake line kit. Uh, we're using a TRX 250, but uh, this installation is good for any type of ATV. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to suggest that you guys take uh, as many things as you can off the front end. Um, the wheels, all the plastics, anything that is going to be on the way of our brake line that we're going to be removing. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing the brake fluid from the stock brake line. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the cap from the master cylinder. Okay, next thing to do to remove the brake fluid from the reservoir, you want to make sure that the master cylinder is even with the bars, meaning you have them at a, at a front view so you don't have it tilted and avoid any spillage of the master cylinder down to your, down to your exhaust. The proper tools to use to uh, bleed the, the brake system will be an 8mm opening wrench and uh, your Mighty Vac, well your shop back here and then you install the shop shop vac tube and then you use your open and 8mm to open up the bleeder nipple. And then at the same time you want to pump the master cylinder making sure that you have every fluid that's coming in from the master cylinder down to each brake line. The shop, the shop vac will help you do that but you'll help just eliminate anything that's trapped in between the, the bolts and the washers. This is a, the Galfer brake line kit that we're going to be installing today. It's a three line kit for an ATV and uh, the kit should include three bolts and washers. There's always two extra washers on Galfer brake line kits. Sure, simply because we know that they can fall on the ground and you may not be able to find them. So there's always two extra washers. And then the three line kit itself. On the three line kit, this is very important. You're gonna have one top brake line that's gonna go to the master cylinder and it always has a label that it says master cylinder. It's labeled for it. So that's the one that we'll be installing on the top. Then you're gonna have the T-block T-block being this piece right here with a center hole and that center hole it's the one that it's going to go directly onto your frame. It's the exact same spot that your stock system has. And it's a three piece brake line. Every single one of these brake lines, different from your stock hose, every single one of them comes apart. It makes it very nice for installation because you can just install the T-block and then tag along one at a time. So now that we have removed the stock brake line, what we did is we took the bolts out on a caliper master cylinder and just simply very slowly removed the hose back out. Do keep the hose um, on hand uh, because you never know, maybe while you're processing, like putting something together or installing it again, you need to have this brake line again. So just never throw it away. We've installed a three-line kit. We have uh, the T-block, the top line, the lower line, and the other lower line, right and left line. None of these three pieces should be tied at this point. All we're doing is installing it, so the piece itself should be able to move without any problems. Right, now that we installed the, the Galfer brake line and the T-block's now set to its position, we're gonna follow down to the right caliper you remember that at the calipers you're gonna have a bolt. You install one washer, then you come down to the right caliper until the banjo fitting itself, and then another washer at every ceiling point. And then you continue down to your caliper. Once you align the, the galfer fitting itself to the, the fitting stop at the caliper, you continue to its proper position and you tighten down the bolt. For the master cylinder, we'll follow the same sequence. We'll have a bunch of bolts, the washer that was provided on the kit. You're gonna pass the bolt and washer through the feeding head. Then you're gonna get the second washer and put it right through. And just come straight onto the master cylinder and tighten it up. The position of the fitting at the master cylinder as well as the caliper like uh, my friend Robert was saying 
it will position itself because the fittings down on the key block are swiveling. Once you have tightened up the master cylinder, you want to go back down now and tighten the T-block fittings all around and you should be set. Make sure that your brake line is properly positioned and that the brake line is not hitting anywhere. When the front end is moving, the brake line should not be interfering with anything. Now you know that the system is ready to be bled. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put brake fluid in the master cylinder. As we are driving the fluid from the master cylinder and down to the caliper, you obviously, this is a job that you probably want to have done with a friend of yours. One of you guys has to be pumping and the other one has to be like bringing the fluid down. We are going to now start doing the bleeding process, which is we're going to be pumping the lever three times and then we're going to open up with the caliper bleeder nipple. When the caliper bleeder nipple gets open, you must hold on to your brake lever and never release it. If you release it, you're going to allow air to come into the system. Again, we're going to pump one, two, three times, hold on to the brake lever and open up the caliper, bleed or nipple. Your brake fluid goes down a little bit, air comes out through the caliper bleed nipple. We then close the caliper bleed nipple and release and continue pumping. You do this for as long as it takes and for as long as you get air over there. Once you start getting nice clean brake fluid, your brake lever starts getting nice and solid. That's when you know that you're bleeding the process. You have one line and another line. So we're gonna be going back and forth from one caliper to the other caliper. One of the tricks uh, of the trade that, that we like to show people once in a while, it's if you do this, you'll see how your master cylinder, it's bubbling up a lot of air. Just a simple vibration of tapping onto the brake lever like that, it's making all the air at the system coming back up. This can save you hours and hours of bleeding process. We're doing the second side now. We're gonna go always back and forth from one caliper to the other. There is not um, a certain amount of times that you're gonna do this. You're gonna do it for as long as you find air on the master, or excuse me, on the caliper. So we keep on doing it until we get a nice and solid brake lever fill. Go. Now that we have achieved a solid brake lever fill, and your lever is no longer moving much. Uh, what we usually suggest is grab a zip tie and put it on the brake lever for a few hours. You don't want to leave it there for very long, but the whole idea here is that the brake system now is under pressure with the brake lever on, and we're making sure that there are no leaks anywhere. So that we have done our work with the, your brake line and that you have installed everything properly and follow the right torque specifications to where there are no leaks anywhere.